So I just started a recording um, so I can catch people up if they miss this. So day 23 warm up. You'll have to pause and see what's going on here. And then uh, we're doing five conditions. That was one, two, three, and then four. And um, we'll have to pause the video to catch up. The fifth check is check if the special phrase contains the word tiger. If it does not, set is good to false. So uh, again, we can just, not bad, we can paste. Uh, yeah, we can use that one. Um, we're gonna use index of to tell if the phrase contains the word tiger. And what we check is if that's equal to negative one, that means it's not found. Um, that's weird, Alonzo. You're, are you on a Chromebook? I'm on the school's Chromebook. And what happens when you type a quote? It enters like these random two dots. Oh, you're in international mode. So go to the, the thing where it has the time and stuff and go to keyboard and then hit US. Thank you. Awesome. I had a feeling. Um, So there's different ways to arrange this whole test. Um, but I've laid it out one way. And uh, the last thing I asked you to do, so we did all these tests where we set is good to false only if it failed. You notice there's never, uh, the, only t the only is good is true is before all the checks. So you don't wanna set it to true in any of these if else statements. Because what's up is we set it to true and then we did all these tests and now we're gonna check if it's true still, that means the string is good. So after all the tests use is good to report if the phrase is acceptable. So uh, right here, if, and you can just say if is good, you don't have to say equal equal true because it's a Boolean variable. And so by its very nature, it's already going to be true or false. Phrase. Phrase. You don't have to put quotes around it. Definitely found that was more tedious than it was worth. But since I've done it, I'm going to keep it. All right. I'm going to test it and I broke it. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of my fancy quotes. Anyone stuck?
Could you scroll up a tiny bit? I want to see the earlier if statement. Yeah. Um, this has the last three. Is that enough? That's fine, yeah. Awesome. So everybody, in a few minutes, I'm going to move on. And it's OK if you didn't finish. You'll be able to finish later. I'm going to post a, a video with all of this in it uh, after class. You can finish it later. But hopefully, having seen it would help. You could take a screenshot of what's on my screen share right now, because that is the last two conditions plus the final wrap up. That's a way to quickly get a copy of the last part. I would say like on my very last if else, I didn't use curly brackets around the else just because I knew it was a single line. I didn't have to use curly brackets on the first part either. So I'm not being consistent, I'm sorry. How about this? Could everyone hold up how many more minutes they would like? And you can do one, two, three, four, or five. Just and if you want more than five, you could just hold up the five. Okay, well, we'll keep going. I'm sorry, everyone who's done. Um, I don't have the next thing ready for you. You could, oh yeah, let's just, Relax then. So we're going to talk about section 3.5 compound Boolean expressions. So um, definitely stop coding. Look at the share screen. Um, I'll have this slide deck posted right after this. So hey, everybody. Uh, sometimes you need to evaluate more than one Boolean expression. Uh, you need to do. Uh, you know, you need more than one thing to be true for to, to trigger something. And we can do this using and and or operators. And specifically to do an and in Java, we do double uh, ampersand, this little and symbol. Is that ampersand? That's not ampersand. Ampersand is that little at symbol. So we use the double and symbol, unless that's called ampersand. I'm sorry, I can't remember. And then we could do an or using two vertical lines. The two vertical bars are over by the enter key. It's like shift backslash. So here's an example. If guess greater than lower and guess less than upper. So we're that, that's making sure that some number is between two other numbers. Then we say your entry is within range. That's an and statement. And then, uh, uh, the bottom example is an or statement. This is doing the same thing, but in a different way. It's saying, hey, if guess is less than lower or guess is bigger than upper, then, uh, then your guess is out of range. Technically, I have to admit, these are not doing exactly the same thing. Um, uh, are they? 
what if it was equal to is all I'm thinking. Um, yeah, so they're not doing exactly the same thing. I'll fix that. But, um, um, so you can you could do just what I just showed you using nested if statements. That's the top where I'm saying, hey, if guess is less than upper, and then inside of that, in a, inside of braces, I do if guess greater than lower. So this is doing the same thing. Like the inside block only happens if the outside block is already true. So it's like doing an and statement. But I think in this case, you might see that that bottom is just two lines of code. It's a lot, lot more simple. Um, uh, that's a compound Boolean statement. So it sounds kind of scary. We're just using the and symbols or the vertical bar, uh, vertical bars, which mean or. So we also have this not operator. I've, I've exposed you to this before. It's the exclamation point and it flips uh, whatever Boolean expression is coming next. So take a look at uh, this example. If now I'm saying if a variable called entry is equal to the word yes. Um, now, so that expression entry dot equals yes, that's gonna give you something that's true or false. And so if we put that not out front, um, that's basically saying, if it, this, this is saying, hey, if it's not, if it's not yes, like putting that little not symbol in front is a way, uh, I guess another way to do that very same thing would be, be to say, if entry dot equals yes, equal, equal, false. That's another way to do that. Um, and then, and then right here where I say another example, this is like what we just did in the warmup. I set a, a variable is good, set it to true. And then I did two checks. And if the checks failed, I set is good to false. And at the bottom, I checked if is good is not true. That's what that not symbol in front of is good down, right down here near the bottom. That's basically saying if is good is false, then, then go ahead and say your entry is invalid. Um, so that last example, which I've reproduced right here, this is, and what we just did on the warmup is an example of using what uh, we call a flag variable. That's where you set a variable to have some value. It could be true or false, or it could be an integer where you started out at zero. And then you go, either way, you set up some variable and then you do a bunch of things, do a bunch of checks. And then after all the checks or all the business that you're doing, you check that variable and say, oh, did the variable change? Is it still true like it was at the beginning? Or if you started it at zero, you could say, is it still zero? And if it is, like that's a way of um, having one piece of code talk to another piece of code um, uh, in a way that's you know logical and uh, uh, easy to implement. So um, now on this page on my screen share, you can see at the bottom I've rewritten uh, pretty close to an equivalent. Like I've replaced six seven lines of code up above with with like one line. And so you might think, well, why would you do a flag variable when you could just do a compound Boolean like I put at the bottom? The problem is if you had like uh, 10 conditions, you know, you really don't wanna do a compound Boolean saying if this and this and this and this and this, you know, like as soon as you're doing more than two or three, you're like, I would recommend like, you, you probably wanna do this a different way. Cause you don't, you don't wanna have uh, an if line that has 10 conditions. You, you can't, you can't, can't keep track of things like that. That's where a flag variable would be handy. Um, lastly, uh, Java has this cool uh, behavior called short-circuited evaluation. And that what that means is if you have a Boolean, a compound Boolean expression, uh, if Java can figure out what the answer is gonna be by only looking at the first part of it, then, then it doesn't even look at the second part. So short circuit in this case is not a bad thing. It's in electronics, it's usually a bad thing or sometimes a bad thing. But right here, what it means is Java checks the first condition of a compound Boolean statement. And if that condition is enough information to decide the whole thing, 
then it doesn't bother to check the other part. It's just a way of saving itself time. So it would make a program run faster, for example. Um, so let's look at an example here. If guess less than lower or guess greater than upper, then print out of range. Now, if the variable guess is lower than the variable lower, um, Java doesn't need to keep checking because this is an or statement, right? So if the first thing is already true, hey, we're good. We can go ahead. The program can continue. Um, now, if the first thing was false, because this is an or, Java has to go and check the second thing. Like, okay, well, the first one's false. I'm looking for just, you know, one or the other has to be true or both, but, but, but I only need one of them to be true. The first one's false, so I better check the second one. Um, uh, fine, but if the first one's true and it's an or, boom, Java just stops, doesn't check any further. I'll show you the and, and then I'll ask if you have any questions. So here's an and example. If value greater than zero and is member, so the is member is a Boolean variable in this case. It says welcome, otherwise it says invalid entry. So if guess, if the variable guess in this example is, if it doesn't, if, if the first condition is false, so if, if value is equal to zero or less than zero, Java doesn't keep checking because this is an and condition. Both parts have to be true for it to, for it, for it to be true overall. And if the first condition is already false, it doesn't have to check the second condition because um, it's it's already, it's like, hey, I don't have to bother because I already know this isn't going to happen. <laughs> you know? hmm. All right, any questions on short circuit evaluation or? For the and, do we have to put both of those symbols? Yeah. Or can we put one? No, you have to put two. And the or, you have two uh, vertical bars. Yeah, one, one practical uh, One practical uh, implementation of this short circuit evaluation I've seen is, let's say you had to divide some numbers, but you wanted to make sure that you didn't divide by zero. Like what if the bottom number in the fraction could be zero sometimes? You could do a compound Boolean statement where the first thing was saying, hey, if this number is not zero, and then you can check your division, you know, and make sure that it fits some other criteria. Um, and then if the first number was zero, then it wouldn't even bother doing the divide by zero. It, then you wouldn't crash, you know, whereas otherwise your program would crash if you tried to divide by zero. Um, anyway, we're not uh, gonna practice coding short circuit evaluation uh, today or probably uh, ever because um, it's just so contrived, but you're gonna wanna be able to recognize it and so I'll definitely give you practice problems where I say, uh, what does short circuit evaluation mean given this code? And you would say, oh, well, it means it's not going to keep checking if such and such is true you know, or false. You'll just be able to explain it. And uh, it'll be fine. OK, I'm going to post uh, our second activity for today, um, which is. I call it very creatively day 23 coding activity. And my slides are on there. Um, and I'll post the video uh, later. I'm gonna stop the